analyze one of the scenarios we saw in the video about interference. In particular, we're going to analyze the first scenario, where we moved one of the speakers closer to you by one half of a wavelength. Let's fill out this phase chart and see if it matches with what we heard. We'll start here. It turns out that this term is zero. Here's why. We're always going to plug in the same value for t when looking at the interference of the waves. This just means that we're looking at the waves at the same point in time. The only way that this piece could have a value is if the time periods of the waves are different. But we know the time periods of the wave are the same. They were being produced by the same function generator. So their frequencies, and therefore their time periods, were the same, 680 hertz. So the difference is just zero. There is no difference between the time periods. We also know that the difference in the fixed phase constant was zero. In the first scenario, we flipped the wires going into the speakers. This corresponded to a change in phase constant of pi. But in the second scenario, we didn't do this. We left the wires as they were. So the phase constants for the waves are the same, and so the difference in their phase constants is zero. This is the part we need to be concerned with. We know this part has value because the locations of the speakers were different. In other words, the distance that the sound wave had to travel, x, to get from the speaker to the microphone in the camera was different. So let's figure out what this piece is. We'll do that right here. Lambda is the same for both of the waves. The reason is that they're both sound waves traveling through the air with the same frequency. Because they're identical in the kind of wave and in their frequency, they must be identical in their wavelength. So the only thing we need to consider here is the difference in x. Writing that out, that looks like this. So we just need to know this number, delta x. We specified what delta x was, though. It was 1 half of a wavelength. So let's plug that in right here. The difference in path length is half of a wavelength. So the difference in the phase of the waves due to the path length difference that the waves travel is negative pi. To get our difference in total phase, we just add up all the individual differences. What kind of interference do we get when we have a phase difference of negative pi? The answer is destructive interference. Destructive interference appears when the differences in phase is pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, or negative pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, etc. This matches with what we heard. When we move the speaker closer by half a wavelength, the intensity of the sound went down. Now you may be saying, if this is exactly pi, why didn't we hear anything at all? Shouldn't destructive interference have completely canceled out the waves? In a perfect world, the answer would be yes. But of course, the world is not perfect. The sound waves are traveling in this room in all directions and are bouncing off the walls in all sorts of weird ways. So we cannot expect that all of the sound would disappear. However, the primary source of the sound, the one coming at us directly from the speakers, interfered destructively, leading to an overall decrease in the intensity of the sound. Next, we're going to look at beats. In order to do this, we're going to change slightly the way we think about the waves. Usually, we've been talking about the waves in terms of the time period of the wave. That is, the amount of time it takes for the wave to get from one peak to the next peak. But there's another way of thinking about the wave that's exactly equivalent, using the frequency. 
The relationship between frequency and time period is extremely simple. They're just inverses of each other. The frequency of the wave is just equal to 1 divided by the time period of the wave. Think back to the video about beats. The closer the frequencies got together, the smaller the number of beats we heard per second. It turns out that it's very easy to write down a relationship between the frequencies of the two sounds and the number of beats you will hear per second. It just looks like this. The frequency of the beats is just the absolute value of the first frequency minus the second frequency. And that's it. It really is that simple. For example, if we had one sound at 440 hertz and another sound at 442 hertz, the beat frequency would just be one minus the other, two hertz. We'd hear two beats per second. It's important to note that beats do not occur because the individual sound waves are changing their volume. Just as with the interference we saw, it's the interaction of the sound waves that is changing its volume. When you add the two frequencies together, they're going to interfere depending on the difference in their period. The kind of interference that these two waves are undergoing changes as time passes because of the differing frequencies. This is why we hear beats. At one moment, the sounds will be destructively interfering, and at another moment, they'll be constructively interfering. The reason we don't hear this effect when the frequencies become far apart is that this frequency of the beats becomes too rapid for our ears to perceive. There's another quantity that's interesting when thinking about beats. That is the carrier frequency. The carrier frequency is just the frequency of the sound that your ear is hearing. The beats themselves are the frequent increase and decrease in the amplitude of the sound. In other words, how loud the sound appears to your ear. However, your brain is still identifying this sound as a single solid tone, even though the two frequencies are different. The frequency that your brain perceives is given by the following. As you can see, this is just the average of the two frequencies that are being produced. To go back to our example, if we have two waves, one at 440 hertz and one at 442 hertz, the B frequency was 2 hertz, but the carrier frequency will be 441 hertz, the average of those two frequencies. Sound waves are cool, but in the next video, we're going to see how these effects can appear in different kinds of waves in particular, light waves.